Aloha, I'm Yanji Denise. Welcome to Get Your House in Order, where we help you take care of the things that matter most. In this series, we cover a wide range of topics from health and wellness to financial readiness and preparing for every phase of life. I'm joined by Paulette Ito, Senior Vice President at Hawaiian Financial Federal Credit Union. Paulette, it's always so good to see you. Wonderful. Uh, well, let's start with the basics. Tell us about what is Get Your House in Order. Get Your House in Order is a planning initiative, something that the credit union came up with to help Hawaii's families become well prepared so that they will be able to thrive. Yeah, and tell us about the resources that you have created as part of this initiative. Um, we have our website, hificu.com. You can go to our website and we have lots of resources. We have lots of stories on why you should get your house in order and the good and the bad. We also have links to our partners that you can go to. We have this podcast and we have articles that will always help people, even our guidebook. Oh, absolutely our guidebook. I forgot about that. We can't forget about that. It's called the Ho'okele Guidebook and that is your roadmap to getting yourself organized and getting your house in order. Right, and when we think about this, we tend to think of a credit union, of course, handling all of our financial information, but the guidebook is really comprehensive. It's covering the best of life and some of the more challenging aspects as well. Yes, we felt that we, we as a credit union can help you get your finances in order, but we're looking at the whole person. We're looking at their physical wellness, spiritual wellness, mental wellness, and financial wellness, and together they all complete a person and by having the guidebook it will tackle all of those areas and we highly encourage everyone to look at the guidebook and fill it out and help them in their journey. Yeah and where do you need to be in that journey to be a person to fill out the guidebook? Who is this for? It's for people I would say in their 20s people who are getting started in their work life because it will help you prepare financially going forward. It, the guidebook talks about your insurance plans, financial planning, um, your bank accounts, health directives. It's everything that you would need going forward. So it's very important that they get this and get it started. Right, and you're talking about people who are fairly young, but if you aren't in your 20s anymore and you haven't done this work, it's for you as well. Oh, absolutely. You will need this book more when you're on your, the elder side, but it's better to start early because then it's not so cumbersome. If you do wait till, say, you're in your golden years, I'm going to say golden years, it may take a lot more effort to put it together. Okay, well, our mm -hmm. conversation is just getting started. We're going to take a quick break and continue our conversation with Paulette in just a moment. But first, let's hear from someone who can tell us why this kind of planning is oh so important. Hello, my name is Josh, and I'm from Honolulu, Hawaii, and I wanted to give a little information about my story and uh, my father specifically. So. My father had lost his job and was struggling to keep up with the mortgage and was falling into depression. It was very dark times for us. Um, and he didn't have any plan in place um, for these events. So I really think having this planned out before time would have been really, really helpful because he was falling into depression and I didn't want to give him any fuel to the fire to make him think giving up or ending his life was okay. So it was, a, it was really, really hard to go through that. Um, but if we had planned ahead and he had planned ahead before these troubling times, these tough times had occurred, I think um, everything would have gone a lot more smoothly. Um, someone else in that position, I think it's hard um, when everything is going good to talk about this, but I really recommend going and talking to your loved ones about this and, ha and having a plan in place because when it's too late, it's too late and um, it's, it's really hard to have that conversation um, at that time. And um, after that was said and done, I was thrust into a very hard financial uh, position uh, because of the home and the repairs that needed to be done and we had a leak um, and I wasn't on the homeowner's policy. So because of that, I had to come out of pocket and pay everything um, for my own personal uh, finances instead of um, being on the homeowner's policy. So um, that being said, I really recommend planning ahead. Um, as hard as it may be, um, planning the good times, have, have a will, um, have this plan ready to go 
Um, so before things get bad or things happen, um, that is all taken care of already, and it'll be very helpful. So I just wanted to um, say thank you for hearing my story, and I um, uh, wish you the best. For all your money needs, Hawaiian Financial Federal Credit Union is here for you. Visit HiFiCU.com. Welcome back to Get Your House in Order, where we help you prepare for life's uncertainties. We are speaking today with Paulette Ito of Hawaiian Financial Federal Credit Union. So Paulette, we know that we, sh we did a season of this show. We talked about the first Ho'okele guidebook. Now there's the next one. Tell us about what's different about the second guidebook. Ho'okele 1.2 is the present. We did Ho'okele 1.1, which talked about the past. So it had past information. This one is all things that you have. So it's about your accounts, your bank accounts, whether or not you have it online, what's your passwords for it, your insurance, what kind of insurance do you have? Is it auto insurance, home insurance, pet insurance? Um, it talks about your 401k plans, your retirement plans. Do you have IRAs? Do you have certificates? Where are they? Do you have any stock certificates? Where, where do you have that? So it's very detailed about things that you have presently your current investments, your current accounts, your current policies, your homeowner's insurance. Those are the types of things that are documented in this booklet. Yeah, interesting because I know in the first guidebook, we were talking about traditions and sort of your family history and that aspect mm -hmm. of your life. And so now you're talking about the things that you currently have it's so interesting to think about having all of that in one place because we know, oh, I've got this account and this account and this account, but if something happens to us, or maybe you're not so good at keeping track of all the places that you've worked and all the 401ks you may or may not have. Mm -hmm. So having that one destination seems pretty smart. It is, and it's, it's good for yourself to have it and know exactly where it is, but it's also good for your loved ones. So if something were to happen to you, they would know what to do. And we found out at our financial institution that oftentimes the beneficiaries don't even know that they're beneficiaries on the account. And they would be very surprised to say, oh, I didn't know that my mom had this account. Okay, so what do I do? And what's the account number? And we have to go through a lot of legal paperwork to get it done. But if you know that they have an account and you can piece all, you know, piece the puzzle together for your loved ones, that's what we're planning. That's what we want to do. That's what we want to accomplish. That makes a lot of sense. Tell us about the response you're getting so far to the guidebook series. Oh my gosh, it's been incredible. We get a lot of calls for the guidebook um, from this podcast and TV show. Many um, viewers are very interested. It's absolutely been overwhelming. It's very good. It must be so rewarding. I know that you have poured a lot of time into choosing the topics and crafting what should go where. How do you know what goes into what category and what we need to cover? Because honestly, in preparing for this program, mm -hmm. you bring up a lot of things that I never thought about, and I think of myself as a fairly responsible adult. <laughs> yes, well, it's just going through life experiences and knowing what is necessary and what we need. And like you said, you're responsible, but you only know what you know, right? You don't know what else there is um, because maybe you don't have, maybe you don't have a 401k or maybe, oh, maybe I'll change it. You don't have a pension because pensions were for people, you know, who are maybe in their eighties and nineties now. They stopped pensions a while ago. So for those people having all of that information, you may not even think about it. That's not something in your realm. And then there's things of pet insurance. And if you don't have a pet, you would never think of pet insurance. There are lots of things that are out there that may or may not, may not be relevant to you, but it's absolutely something that everybody needs to think about. In the feedback that you're getting, what do you find that's particularly resonating with people? Financial planning, which, which is awesome because that's our line of business, you know, financial education. But it's also surprising that there is such a demand for financial planning or at least learning more about financial planning. That's why at our credit union, we provide free financial services for everyone. So we work with our partner, Impact, who we had on the show. You can use their services for free. You can talk to them, show them everything that you have, lay it, they'll lay it out 
for you and show you what paths you can take. If you want to be more aggressive, if you want to retire early, if you, you know, you have children or grandkids that you need to take care of, they'll play it, put it all in the playbook for you and it's free. There's no, um, no charge. And that's what everybody is looking for. Everybody's looking for some kind of leg up in the world. <laughs> yes, indeed. We'll have much more with Paula Ito. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Ho'okele Guidebook. The Ho'okele 1.2 Guidebook is now available for download at hificu.com slash G-Y-H-O. The new Ho'okele Guidebook is part of a four-part series. A new Ho'okele Guidebook will be available each quarter. Each new Ho'okele Guidebook contains all your most important information and builds upon the previous versions. Long's Drugs is always here for Hawaii providing your family with their local favorites, accessible health and wellness services to keep you safe and healthy. Make Long's a part of your day. Welcome back. Before the break, Paulette Ito of Hawaiian Financial Federal Credit Union explained the newly released second Ho'okele guidebook, part of a four-part series. So, we know that those tools are out there. If you've been watching the show, you've been hearing from the experts. I still think quite a few people are just watching and not necessarily doing the work. What do you say to those folks who haven't quite gotten to downloading the guidebook and filling it out? Do it and fill it out. And it, it's very difficult. It's so much easier to say, do it. It's so much easier to say, yes, I need it. But to actually do it is very difficult for myself as well. I had to redo my trust, my second trust. And when I was talking to the lawyer, I realized on my first trust, I never funded it. I didn't understand what I needed to do. Starting to do a trust is laborious. It takes a lot of effort, a lot of conversations. You have to really, really think about who you want to leave your legacy to. And once you do that, you think you're done, but you're not done because all your accounts that you want to pass on to your loved ones needs to be put into the trust. So you develop your trust. Now you have to fund your trust. So just by listening to it and saying, yes, I need to do it, even going to get a trust, there are also other steps you need to do. So it, you know, you have the guidebook, you might've printed it, you might've downloaded it, but you might not have started to fill it out. I say, take a look at it, you know, schedule some time for yourself to do it and really have an action plan. Mm -hmm. That's important. And you know, there's the 1.1, now the 1.2. Is this something that is supposed to be done, you know, chronologically? Can I start anywhere in the guidebook series or do I have to start with 1.1? How do you suggest people go about actually starting to take a bite out of this apple? It's a watermelon. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a lot of seeds in this watermelon, but it's also very delicious. So in other words, it's going to be worthwhile to fill it out. You do not have to fill it out in order. You can do it um, in chunks and you can start at 1.2 and do 1.1 later. The, the way we created it from the past, the present and the future, we didn't want to scare people off because 1.2 is a lot more intensive. It does have insurance information where you have to go pull your um, insurance, homeowner's insurance, or your car insurance, write down the policy numbers, write down what the value for that insurance is, what's your deductible. Those are little um, more intrusive, opposed to the past. You know, who's your mom? Who's your dad? Who's your siblings? Those are things you don't even have to think about. You don't have to pull a document to know how to spell your sister's name. And leaving your legacy, telling me about your traditions that you do as a family. Those are things you can just write. That's 1.1. So we wanted to ease people into it. So if you don't want to feel like you're eating an elephant, you want to do it one bite at a time. Start from 1.1, then 1.2. But if you just want to dive in and take chunks at it, take a look at all of it and just fill out what you can. But my advice is just start doing it. Yeah, and is this something that you should do for yourself? Is this something you could do for a loved one? Let's say you have an older relative and you want to help collect all their information. Maybe they're in a fragile state of health or you just want to know where everything is. Is this something that you can do, you know, not just for yourself, but for others? Oh, yes. You, 
definitely if you do have someone who is in a fragile state i do recommend that you take the booklet to them ask them the questions that are in the booklet to see if they do have something that's already prepared if they don't then start filling it out for them it will help you as well as them to to let them know that their wishes will be undertaken yeah. and it won't be just left to chance. Yeah, and you know what's interesting in having all of these conversations just in doing this program, I find myself thinking about things that I never thought about before and having these conversations with my parents and my spouse and thinking, we should have talked about this years ago. Right, you know, it's, you don't just have a dinner conversation and say, oh, what shall we do with our health directive? Or have you ever thought of a funeral plan? Those, it's not a taboo subject, but it's more of a sensitive subject where you don't bring that up just happen chance. It, you need to have something to help you start that conversation. And the guidebook will help you with that. So in there, it will talk about, do you have a funeral plan? Then you can start that conversation with your spouse and say, hey, do we have a funeral plan? Should we have a funeral plan? Maybe we should look into funeral plans. Where do we start to get a funeral plan? Hmm, let's go to Hi-Fi CU. Let's look at what resources they have available. Maybe they can point us in a direction to someone. And maybe by listening to this TV show, it'll give them a great jump start to that. And that's exactly what we want. Okay, more with our conversation with Paulette Ito in just a moment. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Windows Hawaii, trust Windows Hawaii. Welcome back. We are speaking with Paulette Ito. And Paulette, you know, what's been the best part of doing this series for you? Because you've spoken to a lot of experts and of course you're getting feedback from folks who are downloading the guidebook. What's been the best part? The best part is listening to all the stories that have been coming in. One, it's validation to me to know that Get Your House in Order is filling a void that is absolutely necessary for our Hawaii community but also listening to the stories of those who have gone through life and how planning either helped them or the lack of planning didn't help them. And knowing that this book will help people get prepared. And that's been the most rewarding. You know, when I watch the program, I love the stories, I love the booth, and it makes me reflect on stories in my own life. Of course, it's not appropriate for me to share mine, but I'm sure there are viewers out there who would love to share theirs. Is there a way that people can do that? Um, yes, you can come to our website, hificu.com, the same place you come to download your booklet, we have a button there that they can click on to upload their own stories and tell us how Get Your House in Order has helped them or why they downloaded Get Your House in Order, just to tell us their story. Yeah, and what, are you looking for a specific part, you know, a specific kind of story? Could they perhaps come on the program? Oh, absolutely. Um, we're taking a look at everyone's story and if there's some that resonates with us, we are definitely inviting them to come and share it on this show. Fantastic. So we've got 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1.3 is coming up. What, what can we expect? You can expect things that happen in the future, which means funeral planning, um, life planning, things of that nature of upsizing and downsizing your home, moving, those type of things. That will be in future. And then we'll have miscellaneous at 1.4. Fantastic. Now, I know that you are really the architect of the guidebook <laughs> and kind of deciding what goes where. Do you have a committee that helps you or are you generating all of these ideas? Um, there's a committee of minions in my head. <laughs> and the minions are the ones that are saying, you know, this is what we need to do. But basically, it's looking at life, looking at all the stages of life and what is necessary and what people really need in their lives. And so, like I, I'm, I stated before, not every part of the book will be specific to a person, but pretty much all of those things will be helpful for most of the people. 
I gotta be totally honest. I have not filled out the full no. guidebook. It is so. <laughs> it is. It is so much to think about. And even as I start to to go through those processes, you know, it's sort of I've done half of this, or I've done, you know, not mm -hmm. all of that. Mm -hmm. Have you done all of the things in the book? I bet you have. <laughs> no, you know, a um, lot of like you said about being an architect of it. A lot of this is what I need to do. And that's what makes sense of the book. Like I need to do this, or I need, or I had a difficult time finding these papers, or these are the things that I need to have handy. So those are the things that we've put together in the book. I haven't completed the entire book yet, but I'm getting pretty close to well, doing it. You're human like the rest of us. Oh. <laughs> now, Absolutely. To the folks who are watching, they haven't quite gotten off the couch, they, they haven't quite done it. What's your final piece of advice to them? Why is it so critical to get this you know, get this process started to get your house in order. I just read an article that said that we waste about 14 days a year looking for things. 55 minutes a day. We maybe we can't find our keys. Where did I put my glasses? Where did I park my car? You add all of that time. Those are 14 more days you can have to live your life. And just imagine how much more time we do waste on other things as well. So we want you to get your house in order so you can live the best life you can, you know, thrive. And so do it. If it's not for um, yourself, maybe for your mental sanity of not being, being able to find your keys every day without going, where did I leave it? Or my glasses. You haven't, sometimes I have my glasses on my head, my glasses on here, <laughs> and a glasses over here because sometimes you just can't find it, right? Yeah. This is a, such a good call to action. Mm -hmm. Paula Ito, thank you so much for joining us today. Remember, you can review this show by watching it again on YouTube or listen to it as a podcast wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Yanji Denise. Until next time, take care of yourself and each other. Aloha.